Hello, this is Dr. Lownan from the Department of Biology at Keene State College. In this introductory video, I'm going to teach you how to make and use a standard curve to determine the size of a DNA fragment in an agarose gel. Now this begins assuming that you have run an agarose gel and that on that agarose gel you have loaded molecular weight standards, sometimes known as a ladder, and samples that you wish to analyze. The first thing to do is to actually print your gel out so that you have a hard copy. It's very hard to do this analysis on a screen. Next, you're going to look at the gel and figure out which lane holds the standards, aka ladder. And third, you're going to figure out which band is which size standard. And remember that light bands or lightweight bands travel faster than heavier bands as you do that. Remember that you used a standard in our lab exercise that is referred to as a 100 base pair standard. And it includes a fragment or a mixture of fragments that are 100 base pairs, 200 base pairs, 300 base pairs, and so on, up to 900 base pairs. Let's look at an image of a typical gel. Here's a typical gel. A through F are the lanes that contain test samples. S, all of the S lanes, contain the molecular weight standards. We've got one, two, three lanes containing standards. We're going to take averages, as you can see. So what you do first is you orient yourself. Look, for example, at the S1 lane. Look at the distribution of fragments. What you'll see is the heaviest fragment, 900 base pairs, is at the top, closest to the origin up here, and the lightest, the 100 base pair fragment, is at the bottom, furthest away. It's down here. Light travels much faster than heavy as it moves through an agarose gel. Once you know which fragment is which, then you do some measurements. You determine the migration distance of each of these fragments. So you pick a common spot, such as the top of the gel or the well. Here, let's use the top of the gel. You'll get a ruler out, and you'll simply measure to each band. So that distance in centimeters is the migration distance for the 900 base pair fragment. This distance in centimeters would be the migration distance for the 800 base pair fragment. This distance would be the migration distance for the 700 base pair fragment, and so on. Now you enter that data into Excel. So in Excel, I have a column set up for each of the standard lanes, 1, 2, and 3. And I've entered the distance in centimeter. So the one that we were just looking at is all measured and input here. And then I repeated that process for S2 and S3. Now I'm going to determine the average of these in this column. The formula for determining the average in Excel is as typed here in this cell. You would simply then hit return, and it would take the average of this data. In Excel, if you use the cursor to grab the bottom right portion of the cell and drag down, it'll automatically populate these fields. And you'll have a complete data set without having to type things in over and over again. Now in Excel, we also entered the size of the ladder or molecular weight standards in a column. Okay, And it's, that column is over here. So those standards ranged from 900 base pairs to 100 base pairs. Now that's not the data we want to use for graphing because the relationship between migration distance and the size of a DNA fragment is a logarithmic relationship. So what we're actually going to want in terms of Y data is the log to the base 10 of the size of the latter fragment in base pairs. And the way to do that is shown here. This is the calculation in Excel. You type in equals log 10 and then in brackets, you choose the cell that you want to have as your input data, close the bracket, and hit return. And again, if you use the cursor to grab the lower right-hand part of the cell and pull down, it'll automatically populate that entire column with data using the correct uh, calculation. All right, so now we have X data and we have Y data. It's a little obscured in this screenshot, but our X data is the average migration distance for each fragment size, and our Y data is the 
log to the base 10 of the fragment size in base pairs. So this is x and this is y. Okay, so we're going to enter uh, or create a scatter plot. So you will do insert um, chart and then you will choose the scatter option and you're going to choose this option which might not seem totally intuitive but that's the option that you want. And then you'll hit enter. You can either put that graph or chart into this particular worksheet or to a different worksheet. It really doesn't matter. Okay, once you have a scatter plot, what you will do is click on the data and choose add trend line and choose the option to display the equation on the graph, leave everything else as default. And that will get you an equation associated with this data. You can see that it's a straight line, so this equation is the form y equals mx plus b, something you should be familiar with. So here we have our equation where y equals negative 0.1923x plus 4.264. Remember that x is migration distance in centimeters and y is log to the base 10 of a DNA fragment. So now we have an equation that relates the log to the base 10 of a DNA fragment size to migration distance in a gel. This equation will then be applied to analyzing your experimental sample fragments. So now you're ready to use that equation. You will go back to your printed figure and you will choose an experimental sample, for example A as shown in this screenshot, and you will measure the migration distance for the band in lane A. And there's a green line there to show you what you're measuring. Let's say that, say that we did that and we got a distance of 7.5 centimeters. Let's look at how to apply that distance. Again, using Excel, I create a column where I put the experimental sample label, here just A through F. I have a migration distance column in centimeters. I enter my 7.5 that I just measured into that. So I get this by measuring off the piece of paper. And then I'm going to actually calculate um, the, the y value, okay? And I'm going to use Excel to do that. Here I've got equals and I've input the equation. K4 is telling it to refer to this distance. You can do this on your scientific calculator, but it's easier and quicker to learn how to do, do these things in Excel. When we return that, we will get the log to the base 10 size of the fragment, which is still not the actual size of the fragment. So we returned and we got this value here. And now we want to know the actual size of the fragment in base pairs. And you can determine that by taking the anti-log. Okay, so this is taking the anti-log of that value. You type in equals 10, you put the little caret in, and then you use Excel. It says L4, which tells it to draw data from there, and you hit return. And now, presto, we've actually got data that's directly of interest to us. So this says that the DNA fragment that was in lane A, which was an experimental sample, was 663.36 base pairs long. So that is in units of base pairs, common units for DNA measurements. So now we want to do a reality check. Like, does that make sense? Should I have gotten something that was around 663 base pairs? How do we double check that? Well, we go back and we look at the gel. We look at the gel again and we ask if we were to overlay A and S1, where would the A fragment fall? So by I, I can look at the A fragment here and I can see that it would probably fall somewhere in this range. Well, what range is that? If this is 900 up here, this is 800 base pairs, this is 700, and this is 600 base pairs, then that tells us that the A fragment would fall between 600 and 700, and therefore our calculated value of 663 base pairs for the A fragment is very reasonable. That validates or suggests that our standard curve and the use of it is quite good. Now to complete the work for this lab, you're going to repeat that for all of the unknown sample fragments using the same standard curve, and you're going to make a correctly formatted standard curve for your report organized into a figure with a written caption at the bottom.